and I get a random Lord of the Rings character. Fantastic, that worked, first try. That doesn't always happen. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to deploy a Node application on an EC2 instance running Amazon Linux 2. I've already logged into my Amazon Web Console and I'm gonna start by selecting EC2 so that we can create a brand new EC2 instance. So let's launch an instance. I'm gonna select Amazon Linux 2. I'm just gonna select the T2 Micro because it's part of the free tier and we're going to configure the instance details. We're gonna leave everything as the default. We're gonna leave all of the default settings. You can change these if you want, but all of these are fine for now. Uh, adding storage, the default amount of storage is fine. I don't need any tags. The security group, always important. This is the firewall. So right now port 22 is open, so I can connect to this instance using SSH. I'm going to be deploying a node application on this EC2 instance that is gonna be running on port 8080. So in order to connect to this instance, I'm gonna to need to add a rule for port 8080. So just a custom TCP rule and just 8080 in here. And I want to be able to connect to this instance from any IP address anywhere in the world. So I'm just gonna select anywhere, which is the default thing anyway. Um, and that is good. Maybe I should actually give this a better name. Let's go with uh, uh, node app security group a security group for node apps i don't know whatever review and launch and then i'm gonna launch this and i'm gonna use my existing key pair i have more details on the basics of setting up an ec2 instance in another video that i'll link in the description if you want to go over those steps a little bit more but now i'm just gonna set this up quickly and i can view my instances i already had a running instance from my last video so i'm just gonna name this appropriately so i know the difference we go um, and now I just have to wait for this to be up and running before I can connect to it okay so now that this is running I'm just gonna click the connect tab so I can copy this example snippet from the SSH client tab uh, and I'm just gonna go over to terminal and paste that in and I just need to modify the key part because my key is located in my SSH directory and this should allow me to log into the instance using SSH. Uh, so now I'm on the EC2 instance, perfect. The next thing that I wanna do is just install Node. So there's three parts to this. Uh, the first one is installing dependencies. Node relies on GCC and Make, so I'm just gonna install those. And all of the code snippets that I'm entering right now, I'm gonna leave in the description so you can just copy and paste them after. The second thing we need is to tell Yum uh, which Node installation we're gonna use. So I've just uh, pasted in a thing that says we're gonna install Node version 16. And the last thing is just to sudo yum install node.js. And this should take, I don't know, a minute maybe, maybe less. Oh, that was way less than a minute. Okay, cool. So I should now have node installed. Let's see, yeah, node version 16 is now installed on this EC2 instance. So I can now start running node apps. And I could just start writing code straight on the EC2 instance using something like Vim. Uh, but realistically, I'm gonna be writing a node app on my computer. I'm gonna be committing all the code into a version control system, probably Git, probably pushing it to something like GitHub. And really, when I wanna deploy the code, I just wanna take it from my version control system. So the most common way that I probably wanna get code onto my EC2 instance is by using GitHub. Uh, and in this video, I'm just gonna install Git straight onto the EC2 instance so I can pull the code from my repo and then just deploy it like that. So before I do anything else, I'm just gonna install Git, which is just sudo yum install Git. And then I'm just gonna Git clone this node app I have, which is just an express app that will display a random Lord of the Rings character. So if I list this directory, I have this Lord of the Rings app. If I CD into the Lord of the Rings app, uh, I can see there's you know some standard JavaScript files. There's only a few of them. Your project's gonna be bigger, uh, but yeah, there they are. So the first thing I need to do now is install all of the dependencies that are defined in the package.json file, and I can just run npmi or npm install for that, um, and that should have installed everything. Uh, so now I should just be able to run node uh, server.js because this is the entry point to my application. This is where I've defined the express application. Um, and it is listening on port 8080. So at this point, I should just be able to visit the EC2 instance's IP address at port 8080 and see my application running. 
So I'm just gonna copy and paste this into the browser. I gotta remember port 8080. Uh, and I defined a test route just to make sure things are working correctly. And there we go. So that's just a few steps to get a node app running uh, at a point where I can actually visit my web app on the public internet using the IP address. Now the actual application I have pulls some Lord of the Rings data from a MySQL database and just picks a random character from the database and displays it on the page. And if I uh, just delete the test route, it should request this information from a database, but I haven't actually defined which database it needs to connect to. And this is a really common thing when hosting a web application. Some of the details, in this case, which database to connect to, have to be left up to the system administrator, the person actually setting up all of the infrastructure. And this is done using environment variables. So here I actually have the code for the Node app. And in order to connect to the MySQL database, the server needs to provide these four environment variables because this should be up to the actual server which database it connects to. In a development environment, it'll be a development database. In staging, it'll be a staging database. Production, it'll be a production database. So this just allows the sysadmin to customize this at the point where it needs to be customized. It also adds a little bit more security because then you're never committing passwords into your version control system because they just exist on the machine and not actually in the code. So I need to actually set up these environment variables on the EC2 instance before I run the Node app for this to work. So here I have uh, my environment variables. I've just uh, put it in a blank file in VS Code. Um, and this is a database that I set up in a separate video uh, and I'll put a link to that video in the description. But I already have the database set up, it's ready to go. I just need to define the details for the database. So this is the host that it exists on, this is the user, the password and the database it needs to connect to. And if this is a MySQL database running on the exact same EC2 instance, which is something that you might want to do, you might just want to set up everything on a single EC2 instance if it's a small web app, uh, then I would just change the host to localhost uh, and the rest of the details could stay the same. So all I need to do now is copy these environment variables and I'm gonna go back to the EC2 instance and I'm just gonna stop the Node app from running. And before I run Node server, because that's all I did before I ran Node server, that started the application. Before I actually run that code, I'm going to run the environment variables. So I'm just gonna define each one, give it a value, and then at the very end, like this is just all one line of code, and I'll put all code examples in the description. But when I run this, the environment variables will be set, the node app will start. That didn't work. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> because uh, double quotes in bash interpret exclamation marks uh, as a special character. Uh, I should have actually used single quotes for all of these, but that should still work. Um, node server, yeah, actually. You should use single quotes uh, in Bash if you don't want the stuff in the quotes to be interpreted by Bash in any way. Um, so this will set up those variables, run the server. There we go, that should now work. It's listening on port 8080 as well. And actually, one more thing I should mention. Uh, port is a common one with uh, a, an Express app. Port can be defined uh, by the sysadmin. So I could change the port to, you know, I don't know, 3000 if I wanted to. 3000. Just by defining an environment variable like that. Uh, now it's listening on port 3000 instead, but um, I don't want to modify the port. I want it to stay on 8080, so I'll just leave that off for now. But I now have these environment variables uh, set up and it's running the Node app. So if I go back to my app and refresh now, it should be able to connect to my database and I get a random Lord of the Rings character. Fantastic, that worked, first try. That doesn't always happen. So this is great, this is now working. I have my node application set up, it's running, it's accessible on the public internet, it's connected to a MySQL database, fantastic. The issue now is that if I close this terminal window or exit the app in any way and go back and try and refresh the page, it can't connect to the application because the application isn't running still. So we need a way of always having this node app running. No matter what, if the server restarts, if the app crashes, whatever, it always needs to restart the app. The app needs to be running always, is the idea anyway. Uh, and in order to do this, we can use something called system D. System D is a lot of things and it can do a lot of things, but all we really care about right now is that System D can manage our application as a service so it can start it in the background 
and it can make sure that our application is running every time our server restarts. It can restart our application if it ever crashes. So it's just gonna be responsible for making sure the app is always running. And setting up our application as a service with systemd is incredibly easy. Uh, first, we just create a file. So I'm gonna do that using vim in the slash etsy slash system 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 d slash system system there we go slash uh, and then we just create a service file so i'm going to call this uh i don't know lord of the rings dot service why not uh so i'm going to create a new file here and then i'm just going to copy and paste a code snippet and like i said i'll put all code examples in the description so uh, at the top here we just have the description of what the service is uh, i'm just calling this my node server i probably could have come up with a better description but oh well the after and wanted by sections uh, we're just going to put in multi-user target this just means you know make sure that the system is set up that the networking is all set up before this service starts so it doesn't start too early uh, exec start, this is how our application actually starts. So we're gonna tell it the path to node and we're gonna have node run server.js. So this is just the long way of writing node server.js. We always want our app to restart and we can have a restart time of 10 seconds just in case anything happens. We're gonna send all logs from standard out and standard error to syslog. So this means any console log or console error or anything from the node application is gonna be managed by syslog and will end up in the default syslog location which we'll take a look at in a little bit. So this is really handy because we can easily view all the logs for our application uh, on the EC2 instance. But later on, if we wanted to set up CloudWatch, which is a service in AWS uh, that allows for better logging straight from the web console, it becomes incredibly easy if our application is just directing standard out and standard error to syslog. Uh, and then the identifier will just, this is how we can see it within syslog. Um, the user that is gonna run the node application, this is just the default user we have set up on the EC2 instance, it's EC2 user. We don't wanna give it root privileges or root access or anything like that, so EC2 user's great. Uh, and then environment file. So if we need to define environment variables, we can just put them all in a file, and I've just defined that to be within the application uh, directory itself, just a file called app.env that I'll have to create in a little bit. If you didn't have any environment variables, you could just leave this line off. So I am just going to save this file. There we go. Um, and I am, let's see, yes, I'm in the LOTR directory. So now I'm just gonna create that uh, environment variable file. I just called it app.env. And I'm gonna paste in those environment variables. But I'm gonna put each one on a new line. Looks a little nicer, there we go. So these are all the environment variables just in an environment variable file, this is kind of nice. Uh, so I'll save that as well. And then uh, I'm just gonna start this using sudo systemctl start lotr.service and that should work. So if I just check the status now, we can see that the custom service is in fact running. Um, and this means that I should just be able to go and uh, in my browser refresh the page and the app is running. And if I refresh over and over again, the app runs in the exact same way, but I could actually close this terminal window, exit the EC2 instance, and it would still be running. Uh, there's one more thing I wanna do, which is sudo systemctl enable uh, lotr.service and this will make sure that if the ec2 instance restarts if i reboot it for some reason that the application starts up again and it's always going to be running um, so this app is running that's great one more thing i just want to show you is that if we wanted to view the logs because right now i don't see any of the logs coming out no matter how many requests i make if there's an error whatever all my console logs all my console errors are not going to show up in this terminal uh, but they are located at slash var slash log slash slash var slash log slash messages. There we go, that was a mouthful. So if I wanna view this, uh, I do need root access. So I'm just gonna write sudo and then just cat to display it straight on the screen. Uh, and there we go, there's my, my node server logs. Uh, I can see them versus the other logs here. And I can see all the get requests I made. I should be able to see, yeah, we're listening on port 8080. So if I ever needed to come in, if there was an issue and I just needed to view the logs, I could come in here and view all of those. That's it for this video. We now have a node app running on an EC2 instance that's available over the public internet, and it's always running as a service using systemd. In my next video, I'm gonna show you how to set up 
Nginx as a reverse proxy so that instead of having to access the app through port 8080 or some custom port, uh, we can just access this through port 80, the default HTTP port.